Are you ready to wake up? You are now entering Dreamland. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Now Entering Dreamland, a podcast about dreams, sleep, and everything in between. Welcome back to those of you who have been to Dreamland before. We're happy to have you back. And welcome to everyone who's joining us in Dreamland for the first time. Everyone, I want to take a moment to say Happy Valentine's Day. Hope you're having a good day spending it with loved ones. Perhaps, maybe you're spending a nice day treating yourself, in which case I say bravo to you. But more importantly, it's not just Valentine's Day, it is a Sunday, and that means it's a day that I release a brand new episode to the Now Entering Dreamland podcast. This episode is going to be one in which I detail a sleep issue. This particular sleep issue is actually one that I have mentioned on a few of the interviews that I've done for this podcast. And the issue that we're detailing today is the one of night terrors, also known as sleep terrors. So, first and foremost, what is it? I think pretty much, at least this is my understanding of it, but between sleepwalking and sleep paralysis and lucid dreaming, I feel like those are relatively well-known sleep states and sleep issues. But I feel like a lot of the people that I that I sp- speak to, especially the people I've spoken to for this podcast, don't know too much about night terror. So here's just kind of a deep dive of information into what is a night terror. I want to say right up front, I am not a medical professional. I received all of the information that I got from this uh, about sleep and night terrors from the Mayo Clinic. And everything else is supplemented with my own personal stories about having night terrors. So something I learned from doing my research, uh, thank you, Mayo Clinic, by the way, is that night terrors are actually really, really common in children. And I don't want to, I don't want to make it seem like every child has night terrors. Almost 40% of children have night terrors. The thing about it, though, is that typically children outgrow having night terrors into their teenage years. This is kind of weird for me because I feel like I started having night terrors when I was a teenager. Or maybe that's only when I remember having them. Because one of the issues with night terrors is that a lot of people who have night terrors don't actually remember having them. So that's frustrating, right? These people are screaming out at night, or kicking, or flailing, or walking, or moving, and they don't remember it. It's interesting, too, because it reminds me a lot of sometimes when I sleepwalk, I don't remember it until I see something I did during the night that triggers a memory. Like when I see a dirty plate in the sink, and I know I left it there after having a midnight snack while I was sleepwalking, or... When I open my closet door and I see that I've rearranged all my clothes in the closet, which is not something I would do. I only seem to do it when I'm sleepwalking. So night terrors. Common in children, not common in adults. Another thing that I learned about night terrors is that night terrors can occasionally lead into an episode of sleepwalking. Which makes sense to me. And all night terrors are a little bit different. You know, something that stood out to me in the article that I read is that sometimes a night terror can be so severe that the person experiencing it may actually physically get out of bed and run around their house. And as soon as I read that, I actually felt very seen because when I was a kid, I I distinctly remember times when I was running around the house very loudly. I didn't even run in gym class, so I was I was trailblazing through the house, and one of my parents had to physically stop me. And I remember whenever they did, I would be very, very confused. And that's another thing about night terrors. When you try to wake up someone having a night terror, they are typically very confused if they're woken up. They don't understand why they're being w- woken up. 
And that tracks with me too, because every time I've been woken up after a night air, I have been very, very perplexed. Sometimes someone who has a night air might actually scream or shout out words, uh, coherent or otherwise. That's something that I've experienced too. And a lot of the times a night air will involve kicking or thrashing or moving or like tossing your covers around or doing things like that. So night terrors are not as common in adults. And for all of the interviews that I've done for my podcast, I haven't met anyone who's had a night terror as an adult yet. So if you're an adult with uh, who experiences night terrors, please drop a comment. But for me, I tend to have a night terror which involves a lot of moving. I remember about two years ago I had one in which I guess I was thrashing around really, really wildly. And I, there was a cat living with me at the time. And I guess the cat was so concerned that the cat hopped up on my bed and kept rubbing her head into my face, basically. And eventually I woke up because I couldn't breathe, because when I was trying to breathe, I kept breathing in fur. And... Honestly, when I realized what I must have been doing and what she was doing, it really touched me that the cat was trying to get me to stop moving around my bed like a lunatic. And I want to say plus one for cats, because a lot of people think that cats are these cold, unfeeling, calculated creatures, and maybe they are calculated, but that cat actually cared. So, everyone, rethink your perception of cats, maybe, if nothing else. But I also sometimes scream out during my night terrors, and that's really embarrassing. Um, I remember about three years ago, I screamed so loud in the middle of the night through a night terror that I actually woke myself up. I think this, the sound that I made echoed off the walls of my room and bounced back to me, and I woke up. And I had one of those moments where I was staring around, and I said, hmm, was, did I, did I just... Yeah, okay, yes, I did yell. Well, I am going back to sleep. What I yelled was, stop! I just yelled stop. Which is weird and annoying because I don't know who or what I was talking to. And that's the big thing for my night terrors is I always feel like I'm being pursued or chased by something. And it's something really scary, but I don't know what that something is. I don't know if it's a person that I know, or another human, or a humanoid thing, or a monster. Whatever it is, it must be terrible, because it really scares me. And I guess that's what I was telling to stop, but I don't remember. And after doing some research into this podcast... That is something else that has made me feel better, because a lot of people can't remember what was so scary in their night terror. They just remember something scary. And I don't know about you, but it is so frustrating to explain that you're scared of something when you can't even remember what the scary part is. As I said at the beginning of this episode, I am not a doctor. But if you're experiencing frequent night terrors, like several times a week, and it is interrupting your sleep to the, to the point where you can't get normal sleep, or maybe you're really concerned about the amount of night terrors you're having, that's a good time to see a medical professional. And this is just kind of a plug for this general podcast, but no sleep issue you have should be preventing you from achieving normal sleep. That's just what I want to say. And I think I'm at an age right now, going into my 30s, where I'm starting to realize how important sleep is. I think there's this whole romanticized notion of, oh, young people, they can just drink a Red Bull in the morning and be fine. But I'm at the point in my life now where I'm saying, no, I reject that notion. Like, sleep is really important. So I should be striving to get the most quality sleep I can get. Do you experience night terrors or do you know someone who does? 
I would love to hear your stories, so please take the time, drop a comment under this new episode. I would love to hear from you. And that is it on the latest episode of Now Entering Dreamland. It was a shorter episode this week, but we will be back next week with more Now Entering Dreamland content. New episodes are released in this podcast every Sunday. If you want to keep track of all the episodes or if you want to subscribe, I will direct you to our website at www.nowenteringdreamland.com. You're now leaving Dreamland, but we'll see you next time.